check this out. We have an application that just asks us to enter something. Whether whatever we enter and hit click submit, it gets reflected back. So do you have any ideas what we can do here? For example, maybe XSS. But let's take a look at the code behind this web application. As you can see, it takes the user input right here, and then it basically checks whether the user input includes any of these evil characters. If it does include, it basically sends you, hey, illegal characters were detected. Otherwise, it reflects back whatever the hell you have inputted. So is this actually exploitable? And is there an XSS here? The answer is you're gonna have to find out. And if you probably want to learn hacking, then check out my course, which is down in the description. Now, let's get started. So as you can see, whatever I enter here will get displayed. For example, just a simple string, and obviously, you know, it gets reflected back to the user. And if we were to actually enter something like these illegal characters, or maybe even an HTML element like an image, if we click submit, it says illegal characters were detected. Taking a look at the source code, we need to understand a few standpoints here. First things first, over here, where, where it actually is supposed to reflect the user input, it just checks basically whatever we have entered, and it checks whether the input of ours has these characters. So far, there is absolutely no way to inject an HTML element or an XSS payload that will actually trigger and execute JavaScript code here, because obviously it does this. But I don't know if you heard about the type confusion vulnerability. Let me show you what I can do now. First things first, I will need to enter, basically enable the Foxy proxy. So we, let's enable that and let's go back to the burp and let's just enter something like, like this. The burp will capture that. So let's right click on it and let's go send this to the repeater. In the repeater, we can see how this essentially looks like. So we can enter whatever we feel like here, click send, and as you can see, it will basically get reflected. Same as what we did on the web page. So what can we do is we can select this user input, right click on it, and then go over here to extensions, and then content type converter, and then convert this to JSON. And as you can see, this is no longer form data now, it's basically JSON object, which has user input key, and the value is one, two, three, four. It accepts the JSON object too. So this is on its own very, interesting for us. And this is going to be our interest point here, this user input there. Let me give you a little bit of an education on how this function here, which we're using within the code, which is dot includes actually works. See, when you have a string, for example, is test one, two, three, and then you do dot includes, you can check for whatever you whatever the hell you want it to check whether it includes, for example, if it includes one, it will say true. But if it includes a character f, it will say false. And if it includes this, it will obviously say false. So and if this as well, but includes just basically checks whether something is within the string. And that's essentially what we're doing here. We're just checking whether these characters are within the string the user has input. But let me tell let me ask you something. What prevents the user from just not entering a string? What if the user enters something else? But what could the user actually enter? Well, let me show you. The includes function is actually very silly because it could also be used on arrays, not just strings. We can just do dot includes within the array and we can check whether the array includes something within it. For example, if we have a one, it will say true. And if we have a two and three, obviously, you know, we can check whether it includes a two, whether it includes a three. And obviously, you know, it will basically say that. But if it includes, a, if we check whether it includes a four, it will say false because duh, it doesn't include it. But the array can also contain various different stuff, for example, strings. So we can just say test one, two, three, four, and we can just say another test, blah, blah, blah. And see, remember what we have done on the string, we can just check for specific numbers. But here within the array, we can't really do that. We need to check whether it includes, for example, two, and obviously, obviously, it will just say false because it doesn't contain the two within the array, but within the string, it actually does. So our XSS mitigation technique won't work because what we can do is we can still enter these characters within the array and it will obviously just say false, even though that's true, even though it's still obviously, as you can see, contains it. So what can we do here? So what if instead of a string, we basically provide an array and within the array, we have a string and that string contains test one, two, three, four. Let's see if will that get parsed. And as you can see, it absolutely will get parsed. So what if we now include these characters? If we hit send, would you look at that? We absolutely can include these characters within the string. So can we try to include an image? Yes, we absolutely can. 
Okay, let's craft a simple XSS payload to see whether we can actually inject it. So let's go with image, search XS XX on error equals to alert. And this is going to be essentially our payload. So let's copy this and let's send it to see if it actually gets reflected. And yeah, as you can see, it does get reflected. So I'm just going to copy this entire array, copy it, and then go back to proxy and just turn on the intercept. I will go back now and enter, go out of this and enter something like test. I will obviously enable the Foxy proxy. And as soon as I enable it, I will send this request. So submit it. And as you can see, it gets caught here. So let's just basically turn this into JSON. So again, content type converter, convert to JSON. And then instead of a test, let's put an array. If we forward this now request and go back, we obviously need to forward everything. And as you can see, we get XSS. So we essentially were able to inject this image. And this is called type confusion, something that I've just mentioned earlier in the video. And as you can see, Sneak here actually provides an example of why dot includes is bad usage here. And if you want to use includes, you probably are better off checking whether the type of, of whatever you entered is a string. So for example, the username, you check the type of the username and it has to be a string. So that's a one way to mitigate this. But overall, you can't just mitigate this altogether by using test and then putting up a regex maybe or something like that. But overall, this is very insecure. And hopefully you'll learn something today. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay responsible, and as always, peace.